Hey there. Over the next 10 minutes, we're going to guide you through the basics of ThingsBoard. ThingsBoard is an open source IoT platform that simplifies the development, management, and analysis of IoT applications. It allows developers to connect devices, collect real time data, visualize it effectively, and make decisions based on advanced analytics. If you're taking your first steps into the world of IoT, ThingsBoard is the perfect platform to start with. Its open source approach and active developer community make it easy to learn and use. Additionally, its ability to cover projects from the most basic to the most advanced provides you with the necessary flexibility to explore and experiment with different IoT applications. So, we'll cover creating a device, connecting it, setting up a dashboard, configuring alarm rules, creating alarms, and even creating a customer and assigning a dashboard. So, if you're new to IoT, this tutorial is perfect for you. Let's jump right in. First, let's create a device. To do that, we'll go to the sidebar in Devices and click on the Add Device button. In the Name field, we're going to put My Device. Then, click on the Add button. And now, press the Close button. Great, we've created our first device. Now, let's check its connectivity. A modal will open where we can check using HTTP, MQTT, and CoAP. As you can see, we have several ways to connect our devices to ThingsBoard. In our case, we're going to use HTTP. We'll copy the command to later open a terminal and execute it. Awesome! We're already receiving data in ThingsBoard. This exercise we just did is like simulating the moment of sending information from a device to ThingsBoard. How cool is that? Now that we have a device, let's create a dashboard. Then, click on Add Dashboard. Create New Dashboard. Let's name it My Dashboard and then click on the Add button. Now that we've created a new dashboard, let's add some widgets to it. Now let's go to the Tables section, then Entities table. Now we select the device we created, and in the Columns part, we add the Temperature key, then press the Add button. Resize the widget a bit. Cool. Now let's add another widget, this time a Time Series chart. Select the device we created, and then press Add. Let's just tidy up those widgets we've just created. Okay, now let's check out how our new widgets display the data. Let's generate some temperature values in our terminal. Check it out. Our data is updating in real time on both the table and time series chart. Isn't that incredible? Now that we can visualize the data, let's create some alarms. Let's add a widget, select Alarm Widget, and select an alarm table. Then we select our device, check all the boxes, and press Add. Adjust the size of our widget to make it look better. Perfect. Oh, something important. Don't forget to save the changes on the dashboard. Now let's go to Profile, Device Profile, select Default, Navigate to Alarm Rules, and click on the Edit icon. Press the Add Alarm Rules button. In the Alarm Type field, let's name it High Temperature. Press the Add Alarm Rule condition. Press the Add Key filter. Here, let's choose Time Series for the key type, Temperature for the key name, and Numeric for the value type. Press Add New Filter. In the Operation field, select Greater Than, and for the value, let's input 33, for example. Perfect, now just save all the changes and our alarm is configured.
Now let's head back to the dashboard we just created. Let's open up our terminal and simulate our device sending information. We'll make sure that one of the values exceeds 33 degrees Celsius to trigger the alarm. Perfect. As you can see in the alarm table, when our device's temperature surpasses 33 degrees, the alarm is triggered. This feature is incredibly useful for temperature monitoring. Awesome. Now that our fantastic dashboard is ready, let's share it with a customer. But first, we need to create one. Press the Add Customer. Let's title it My Customer, then press the Add button. As you can see, once created, you'll find it in our list of customers. Here, we can manage all devices, dashboards, and accounts. Now we're going to assign our devices that we created earlier to our new customer. Select My Customer and press Assign. Now let's also assign our dashboard. Select My Dashboard. Press Assign Dashboard. And select My Customer then press Assign. Now that we have a customer created, let's create some accounts so they can access things board. Press S user. Here, you should enter a real email. In our case, let's put a fake one. Press add. Now let's copy the activation code and open it in a private window. Here, we'll create a password. Now, as you can see, we're logged in as a user who will be using our dashboard. Notice how the options in the sidebar are limited, and to access our dashboard, we'll need to find it in the sidebar. To make sure our user only sees the dashboard screen when they start the application, we'll need to do a few things. Open the user details. Select the edit mode. And here in the default dashboard field, put my dashboard and check always full screen. Great. Now to test it, we need to log out of the session. Here we input the credentials for our newly created user. And voila, now our user can only see the dashboard we created and won't have access to other options in the sidebar. Let's now put our dashboard to the test by simulating data transmission from our device using the console. Great, everything's working well. I hope this tutorial helped you get started with your IoT projects using ThingsBoard. If you liked it, please consider liking and subscribing. Bye.